Apple recently hosted a press event, and I figured really quick, I'll run down through all of the things that they announced that you might care about. Okay, so Apple has had HealthKit and Research Kit. Now, HealthKit uh, is basically a framework that allows apps to kind of talk to one another uh, to share data based on fitness stuff, uh, from sleep to calories to steps and even to sex. Yeah, if you look in the health kit, there's actually sex in there. Um, it's healthy. Uh, but yeah, so that is their kit that they use uh, for everybody to kind of share data. Then research kit is kind of taking that a little bit more into the medical research field where uh, data can be shared uh, through people doing research and that can help provide uh, uh, tons of information on different diseases and help people come up with cures. Now though, Apple just released care kit uh, essentially, it's the same concept as the other two, but it's meant for after you've received your diagnosis. So for example, if you just had surgery and then you were discharged from the hospital and able to go home, they usually give you a piece of paper uh, that tells you all of the things that you need to do post-surgery to make sure that you recover properly. One hospital is actually using CareKit's framework to create a digital version of this checklist. And it's more than just a checklist. You can also use uh, the phone's sensors like the accelerometer to check your range of motion and have it automatically record. Uh, you can type in things like your temperature to make sure you don't have an infection uh, and not just record these things over time and see how you're doing, uh, but also you can share it with your friends and family if you need to. Uh, and then also share it with your physician, which is obviously the most important. Now the physician then can in turn take the other side of that app and then update uh, the things that you need to do based on your progress in real time. Now this is just a framework, not an actual app necessarily. Uh, so it is up to other developers uh, and hospitals and whoever else to come up with their own apps that utilize this framework. Uh, but it is releasing in April and it will also be open source. Next up, Apple talked about the Apple Watch. Uh, basically, they came up with a new material for the band, uh, which is kind of like a woven material, and it comes in four colors, three of which are really bright. Uh, then we have a new color for the leather band and for the sport band. And finally, we have the black or space black Milanese uh, loop that's also been released. Oh, and small little thing, uh, they kind of just threw it under there real fast. Uh, the Apple Watch is now $299. Next up, Apple announced a new iPhone. Um, probably from being bombarded by a lot of people asking them for a smaller iPhone, they brought back a four inch iPhone called the iPhone SE. The phone itself looks a lot like an iPhone 5. Uh, it does come now in the rose gold color, uh, and it has a metal back with glass top and bottoms of the back. Uh, and it is, of course, that four inch size that I mentioned. The camera is the same exact camera that you get on the 6S. Uh, it records 4K video. Uh, it's the EyeSight 12 megapixel camera with all the fun optics that the 6S one has. Uh, and it also uh, has the same internals as the 6S as well. So we have the A9 processor with the M9 coprocessor. Now they're also touting the fact that the M9 coprocessor is running all the time. Uh, so they've enabled Hey Siri to work all the time. You don't have to actually push the button. One thing they did not mention um, even though they said that it is capable of doing live photos, there is no 3D touch, um, which is odd. Um, but interestingly enough, that is probably the biggest omission that everybody is, keeps talking about. So that's the one feature that you won't get that the 6S and the 6S Plus do have. Now the iPhone SE will be available on March 31st with pre-order starting on the 20. Fourth, uh, and it'll be $399 for the 16 gig and $499 for the 64 gig. Apple also announced the official release of iOS 9.3. Uh, anyone that wanted to get it early probably did uh, using the beta that's been out for quite some time, but now it is officially available to everyone. Uh, it has some neat features like night shift mode, which they kind of stole from uh, Flux. Flux, which basically adjusts the color temperature of the screen to a more warm tone, reducing the blue light that is being beamed at your face, um, which according to a lot of scientific studies, affects your sleep, hurts your eyes, etc. It also has the ability to protect specific notes using a password, which I'm sure the FBI is really happy about. Uh, for a full list of features though, you can click the link below. In addition to a smaller iPhone, Apple also released a smaller iPad Pro. 
This new iPad Pro, which everyone kind of thought would be called the mini because it does have a smaller sized screen and there is still another iPad Pro, is not called the mini. It's just called iPad Pro. Uh, maybe iPad Pro 9.7 inch because it has a 9.7 inch screen uh, and it weighs about a pound. Now, in addition to that, uh, it has True Tone display, which apparently measures the ambient light in the room and adjusts the color temperature to match, similar to that flux feature I mentioned before, except not to help your eyes, just to make the screen look better? I don't know. It has four speakers, an A9X processor, it has Hey Siri support, uh, and there's also a custom-sized keyboard uh, that is an accessory that you can also purchase that goes with it. Not sure what's so custom-sized about it besides the fact that it's smaller, but there's that. Uh, it does have a USB camera adapter, which will work for both iPad Pros and an SD card reader that will also work for both iPad Pros. Again, this is all part of Apple really trying to make people get rid of a PC and use an iPad Pro instead. Not sure that makes sense, but that's what they wanna do. Finally, it has the same camera. Uh, as the iPhone SE and the 6S, so it's that 12 megapixel 4K video fun camera. Uh, and it'll be $599 for the 32 gig, $749 for the 128 gig, and $899 for the 256 gig. Uh, and then it is available uh, March 31st with pre orders starting March 24th, just like everything else. There you guys, quick recap of everything that was just announced. Um, please let me know in the comments what you think about the things that were announced and also what you think about this video. Should I do more newsy videos like this? I'd be interested to see what you guys think. Um, and I do read the comments to try to answer them whenever possible. If you did like this video though, please thumbs up it or share it. It is greatly appreciated. And if you want more videos like this, please subscribe to the YouTube channel or follow me at dkogan on Twitter uh, for the latest updates as they happen. As always, Thanks for watching.